So in the previous video, we discussed a few things about the divisor function. And just as a reminder, the divisor function just counted the number of positive divisors of n. And this was summarized quite nicely in summation notation as the sum over all divisors m of the natural number n. And each time we found a divisor of n, we just added one. And in the previous video, we also used this formula here, which said that if n had the prime factorization p1 times u1, times p2 to the power u2, times p3 to the power u3, all the way up to pr to the power ur, then we can calculate the value of d of n, i.e. the number of divisors of n, just by taking u1 and adding 1, then multiplying that by u2 plus 1, and then multiplying that by u3 plus 1, and so on and so forth, until you get to ur plus 1. And in this video, I just want to prove why this formula is true. So let's just take, again, a prime factorization for n. Let's say n equals p1 to the power u1 times p2 to the power u2, all the way up to pr to the power ur. And I want to find out why d of n has this value. Well, if I look at the first term, so the first term here, what are the possible choices for what this first term could be? Remember, this n has some arbitrary prime factorization. So what are the possibilities for that first term in the product? Well, the first term, so the first term could be 1, or it could be p1, or it could be p1 squared, or it could be p1 cubed. And it could be any power of p1 all the way up to p1 to the power u1. OK, but how many terms is that in total? We've got, well, certainly we've got 1 to u1 here. So there's u1 from here to here. But in total, we've got u1 plus 1 terms. So the total number of terms is u1 plus 1. So that's the total number of terms in the first instance. It's probably easier if I write it as 1 plus u1. OK, now how about the second term? If I look at the second term, how many choices do I have for what the second value could be? Well, this is p2 to the u2. So the second term could be 1, if the prime doesn't appear in the factorization. It could be p2, if it's just there with no power to it. It could be p2 squared, if it's p2 to the power 2. It could be p2 cubed and so on and so forth until you get to p2 to the power of u2. And again, if we count the number of, uh, they should say three, if we count the number of um, possible choices, we've got one, two, three, all the way up to u2, and we've got to add one because we've got this possibility of just having one. So the total number of choices for the second term, let's just scroll down, the total number of choices here is one plus u2. So there's 1 plus u1 choices for the first term, and 1 plus u2 choices for the second term. OK, so the third term will also be similar. It's going to have 1 plus u3 choices. And if we keep going up to pr to the ur, so let's say the, um, the rth term, then what do we have? Well. The possible factors could be, we could have 1 as usual, we could have p sub r, we could have p sub r squared, we could have p sub r cubed, and we can keep doing this all the way up to pr to the power ur. And again, how many choices are there? Well, there's 1 plus ur. So we've got 1 here, and then the rest adds up to ur. So the total number of choices is 1 plus ur choices. Now we want to find the value of dn. And to do that, we need to find out what the total possible number of choices is. And the way we do that in combinatorics is just to multiply all the possibilities together. So in this case, we've got 1 plus u1 choices. And that, that means there's 1 plus u1 ways of, of arranging the first term. And likewise, there's 1 plus u2 choices for arranging the second term. And if you remember from combinatorics, if you've got two terms and there are, there are six ways of arranging the first term and five ways of arranging the second term, then you multiply six by five to get the total number of arrangements. OK, so the total number of arrangements is just going to be the product of all of these terms. 1 plus u1, 
times 1 plus u2 times 1 plus u3 all the way up to 1 plus ur. So that tells us that the number of possible divisors remember each of these possibilities is a divisor of n so the total number of possibilities is going to be 1 plus u1 because that was the total number of possibilities for the first term so that's 1 plus u1 times the total number of possibilities for the second term and that was 1 plus u2 and we keep doing this all the way up to 1 plus ur okay so that's where the formula for dn comes from it's simply 1 plus u1 times 1 plus u2 all the way up to 1 plus ur and the technique that was used in this uh, this proof where we take n and we put it into a prime factorization this is going to be used time and time again throughout a lot of proofs in analytic number theory and the distribution of primes in this series um, so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, in the next video I'll prove that the divisor function is actually a multiplicative function um, if you like this video please leave a like comment and subscribe and I'll see you then thanks